What is up, chicken butt? Here we are back on the Mustang. It has been forever since you guys have seen this. As you can see, it's taken a change for the better. Flip the camera, boom, extensions, bam, extensions and fenders, little pieces and intake. This, we got some color. Color, all in the jam. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Roof skin is primed, although it still has many dents in it. Quarters are primed. I have done nothing with the trunk after I've installed it. Um, gonna have to do this back panel, but I'm gonna do that after I get the car on the ground. This quarter's primed. That's still an epoxy primer. The whole underside of the car has been painted. Um, I did it in a uh, hot rod slash satin black. I actually ended up using an Emron paint. <clears throat> Uh, I wish I still had the can, but anyways, it's satin black is what I did the whole underside. And let me see if I can flip this camera around it. So there's kind of the fender well. Still going to do a little touch up work here and there. But as you can see, it's kind of like a satin ish color. Uh, like that all the way down there's still little remnants of factory undercoating uh, <clears throat> not sure if I'm gonna end up reapplying all that do you like to know more date on the mock engine um, I found these Shelby valve covers on Facebook for sale along with a bunch of other Mach 1 parts and I also got this torquer intake from my good buddy TR. He's got a Boss 351, and I think he had it on that car for many years, and, and <clears throat> he ended up putting it back stock, I'm assuming, or maybe he had a Mach 1, and then, you know, something and another. Anyways, he had an extra 351 intake, and he just gave it to me. Um, I paid for this Performer, which is a dog compared to this thing this is if you haven't seen this before I got the four dot heads and they are open chamber and <clears throat> I, I think I read that the four dots are closed chambered but these are open and it is a four barrel got all my spindles powder coated new brake calipers painted up shields are powder coated all my suspension stuff here is powder coated the rear end's been powder coated, cor mostly correct. The chunk is correct, the axle's correct. I thought <clears throat> the backing plate would have been silver or a raw color that I was trying to emulate with a silver, but I think it was actually supposed to be black, but I'm gonna run with it because it's too late to turn back now. Got my torsion bars or torque bars, whatever you want to call them, motor perches, stuff like that. All that stuff's ready to get put on. We've got leaf springs up here. Boom. Got to put new bushings in there. Uh, got a new bumper up there. The valance picked up from Turkey Rod Run is painted. I finally worked that Endura bumper and got it all fixed up. New hood. Ended up going with a brand new hood. Got rid of the old one. It's too much work, to be honest. I want to drive the car in my lifetime. I don't want to spend the rest of this century beating dents out of it. <clears throat> Products that don't suck. Listen, if you're going to do a restoration and you're going to do it top notch, get yourself an AMK Master Kit or at least a couple of packs of what you need. So some people may say, man, that's a lot of money for hardware. Dude, I'm not spending that. 
Well, if you go to Ace Hardware or Lowe's or any place like that, you'll spend about a dollar a bolt, maybe 50 cents a bolt. There's, I don't know, three or 400 pieces here. You do the math. You could spend that on the 265 on this kit and be right, be absolutely correct. The concourse people cannot come around your car and pick it apart for hardware because you will be absolutely correct. Oh, yes. He has made a complete mockery of this Jaguar. Yes, absolutely. He's got the fender bolts here on the bonnet. Yes, I have noticed that almost immediately. Five points deducted for this Jaguar. You put it in the right spot, and luckily for you, it tells you right there. Hood latch and catch bolt set. So, you won't be wrong. Now, so you would think, man, this is a lot of stuff, you know? This is great, but, you know, it's no cheap venture to get something like this. 265 bucks for this bolt kit here. I mean, honestly, it is a deal. Absolutely. Anybody who's looked for hardware knows this is a deal. Okay? If you go to Ace Hardware, they'll charge you a dollar a bolt. That's right, one dollar, one bolt. And there's over 300 pieces in this kit, okay? So, honestly, you can go spend a dollar a bolt at Ace Hardware and get 300 pieces and be wrong. You can spend it here, get it bagged and tagged and sent to your front door, and it's right. And it's made right here in the USA. I don't know if I can say that about every bolt that's made in Ace Hardware. And honestly, I don't know if these bolts are made here, but it says it's made in the USA on the box. So I don't know if it's talking about the box or the bolts, but I'm pretty sure it's talking about the bolts. Bam. Okay, so what we got here is my new Mach 1 hood, which I had a few shots shot of that, um, where basically the... EDP coating that comes on these brand new parts is pretty much garbage. All it does is hide the rust. You need to strip all that off and start fresh. Unless you don't care, then do what you want. So it's been stripped and sprayed with Evercoat Super Build. You can see the fenders here. Got the little extensions on there. They're primed for the most part. Inside the... Uh, little channel there where your body bolts go i'm gonna have to redo those really give it a good sanding and a nice high build primer the spoiler has been sanded and primed first with epoxy then with the evercoat super build i've got the front suspension basically hooked up we got the coil springs that are factory believe it or not these goofy little insulators are hard to find man <clears throat> at least locally nobody carried them i had to order them off the internet uh caliper is from the regular parts house all my brake lines and brake stuff is from right stuff detailing if you can see down there we got the two brake lines on the ground and the fuel lines over there uh updates are these the car's basically been jammed and uh that's all been sprayed i've got some more uh bolts for these hinges so they'll all match coming uh, all this stuff has been powder coated. So, the full update on the car and where we're at is doors need to be adjusted to the body. The body doesn't move. The doors can. So, you adjust the doors to the body. So, you start from the back and then move your way forwards. I've seen people try to adjust the nose first and then they're, they're like, oh, it, it only goes one way and then, you know, we'll just fit it to the back. It doesn't work that way, dude. It's not just one way. You know, there's endless amount of possibilities and different ways you could align that car. And I'm going to tell you right now the quickest way to get to the best alignment without screwing up all your body work and whatever paint work you have. And I hope you're not trying to adjust one after the car's been painted because you are playing with fire, dude or chick. You adjust the door to the body. The body doesn't move. The door does. So you adjust the door with the hinges. You've got an action that moves it this way, up and down, so your body line's here. You can have your door up here, or down here, or whatever, or out. 
you know, out this way. You've got to adjust for that. You want your panels to line up. You want that gap going down in between the door and the body. You want that to be as uniform as you can get it. Now, when you can't adjust anymore, like I've seen on these C10 trucks, they, their adjustment's awful, man. There's the gaps are crazy. It's like every day they were printing a new stamping for those doors or something. It's, it's not the greatest. You have to take rod and run it down the edges of the doors or, you know, to get the, uh, to get the edge to get longer. Sometimes I've seen on that because you get, you know, your gap will be that wide and then you, you add a rod on the door. Like, let's say this is the door. And that's the rocker panel. You got to add rod to close that gap up to get a uniform. I had some stuff in there on that in that video I made that got destroyed because the uh, SD card broke in the GoPro as I was pulling it out. So doors got to be adjusted to the body. Then I can put the fenders on, and then put the hood hinges in the roof or the the hood and get it adjusted properly. Because I've seen some guys saying that you know the hoods arch. Uh, it, it's not right. They say, oh, you got to get your hood on there and then you may have to stand on it. And I'm like, I'm not standing on my damn hood. What are you talking about, man? But we'll see. You know, a man put it together. I can put it back together. It's not a big deal. My Mustang wheels are on the Cyclone. The Cyclone wheels will go on the Mach 1, but the tires are roasted on that uh, Cyclone on those wheels and they're 14s. I don't want to buy tires for 14 inch wheels. Uh, that's going to be a really cool project. If I can get this Ram Charger sold, we're putting a 429 Cobra Jet four speed close ratio in that Cyclone and we are going to do burnouts for days. Burnouts big time with that car. My goal with that thing is to have something I can mob the streets in and that thing, you know, just cruise around and you know kind of be a sleeper a little bit because I mean how many people know what a cyclone is you know the GoPro has officially taken a dump I turn it on it turns off it'll record for about two seconds then it says it's repairing my file and I asked it dude if you'd quit screwing it up, you wouldn't have to repair the file, right? But I get nothing from this guy. Look at it. It just sits here blinking. Well, if you wouldn't have thrown all them sparks in my face, maybe I'd work for you. That might as well be a middle finger, right? Anyways, let's switch over to the phone. And I really apologize for all the different edits in this video. But I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to keep them coming. But I'm dealing with this subpar crap here. If anybody knows of a good camera that's not going to kill me and can withstand being outside in this rugged terrain, put it in the comments. I would really love to know about it.